Hi folks, hope you're okay. To, it's good to see you. So we're on this book. Like I said, I had a number, a lot of videos on this book, but I've lost them because of the 80s harassment. Hopefully they'll pull the channel down that I've been asking them to take down, and I can get on with my scholarly pursuits. So we're getting on with this. Um, basically, what Lycan has done so far in the introduction is basically saying, look, biblical historians are not. Uh, biblical scholars are not trained in history, historical methods. What I want to do is take uh, secular methods of his, history, that's what he's saying, and apply them to the resurrection of Christ. Okay? So, there are numerous challenges to acknowledging the past. This is the theory or philosophy of history. Since the past is forever gone, it can neither be viewed directly nor reconstructed precisely or exhaustively. Accordingly, accordingly, sorry, accordingly, historians cannot verify the truth of a hypothesis in an absolute sense. Our knowledge of the past comes exclusively through sources. This means that, to an extent, only our only link to the past is through the eyes of someone else, a person who has his or her own opinions. Therefore, just as two newspapers offering reports of the same event can't differ significantly due for example to the political bias of the journalists reports coming to us from ancient historians have likewise been influenced by varying degrees of bias of the ancient historian historians ancient and modern are alike selective in the material they report data the reporting historian deems uninteresting unimportant or irrelevant to his or her purpose in writing are usually omitted it's, it's important that we all recognise that all historians are biased, but that doesn't mean to say we can't get objective evidence. Amazingly, says Lycona, neither Philo nor Josephus, the most prominent non-Christian Jewish writers of the first century, mention Emperor Claudius' expulsion of all Jews from Rome in A AD 49-50. Only Suetonius and Luke mention the event, and each give it only one line in passing. A contemporary example is found in Ronald Reagan's autobiography, in which he comments on his first marriage. Readers desiring to learn about this relationship will be disappointed, since Reagan offers, offers a total of two sentences. He says, The same year I made the Newt Rockin' movie, I married Jane Wayman, another contract player at Warner's. Our marriage produced two wonderful children, Maureen and Michelle, but it didn't work out, and in 1948 we were divorced. So... He's saying there that historians are selective, and this is important because a lot of skeptics and his uh, uh, atheists don't really understand the historiography and how ancient history works and how history works generally. That is, everybody is biased, everybody's selective. So when an atheist comes and says, "Why doesn't the uh, Gospels mention the resurrection um, people coming out of the uh, tombs when Christ was resurrected?" Um, you got to understand that every historian will select information and data to tell their story. And um, if you don't understand that, you're going to make silly arguments from silence. In fact, arguments from silence are very rarely used by historians. Uh, it's only the unsophisticated atheists that actually use them in debates, really. Um, so there we are. Okay.